when the children of Israel eventually arrived at the Jordan River, they camped in the plains of Moab. And the people of Moab, to their south, were scared of them. They'd seen what had happened to the Canaanites who fought against Israel, and to the Amorites who fought against Israel, and they were scared that Israel would fight against them. So they called on a prophet, Balaam, from the Euphrates River area, who had a reputation of delivering curses against people. The people of Moab were superstitious and thought that a curse pronounced against Israel would allow them to defeat Israel. But God spoke to Balaam and said, You shall not go, these people are blessed. He didn't pass on that message. And when they came back, he went with them. The angel of the Lord stood in the way, and three times Balaam's donkey turned aside, lay down at his feet, delivering Balaam from judgment, and ultimately speaking to Balaam, so that Balaam realised his way was offensive to God. God emphasised to him that these people were blessed. He needed to speak what God gave him to say. And so he has come to Balak, the king of Moab. The king of Moab has offered sacrifices and shown Balaam the extent of the people camped in the plains of Moab. And we continue the story in Numbers chapter 23. Balaam said to Balak, Build seven altars for me here, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go, and perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. So he went to a desolate height. And God met Balaam, and he said to him, And he said to him, I have prepared the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. So he returned to him, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his oracle and said, Balak the king of Moab has brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There are people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob? or number one-fourth of Israel. Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my end be like his. Then Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies, and look, you have blessed them bountifully. So he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only the outer part of them, and shall not see them all. Curse them for me from there. So he brought him to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. And he said to Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go back to Balak and thus you shall speak. So he came to him, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab were with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? And he took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a wild ox. 
For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done! Look, a people rises like a lioness, and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey, and drinks the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. So Balaam answered and said to Balak, Did I not tell you, saying, All that the Lord speaks, that I must do? Then Balak said to Balaam, Please come, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Peor, that overlooks the wasteland. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we read this very profound chapter. Although Balaam had no interest himself in blessing the children of Israel, and we'll find that he shows Balak how Israel can be defeated, but he cannot pronounce a curse against these people because they are blessed. Many people fear curses, but curses have no power when there is no justification. And here there is no justification. As Balaam proclaims, God does not observe the iniquity in Israel. God has put their iniquity out of the way. He has dealt with it. He has dealt with it by sacrifice, and in particular by the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is not a man that he should lie. He shouldn't change his mind. Many people like to use lies to take an advantage of people. But God doesn't tell lies. And God doesn't change his mind. He has a purpose. He does set before people two ways, a way of blessing and a way of hardship. And we must choose whom we will serve so that we can walk with God and experience his blessing in our life, his peace, his joy. Or we can walk some other way and miss out on his blessing and experience the hardships without the blessings. Balaam speaks great blessing on this nation of Israel, a nation that three and a half thousand years later, God is still blessing. God is bringing them back to the land. They are a people who are among the nations and yet are different because God is their God and they are his people. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number one-fourth of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. Although Israel has gone through very hard times over the centuries, yet the day is coming when their king shall return. Even as Balaam prophesied, there is a king among them. This king is the Lord Jesus. And when he returns in power and glory, he will establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. But he is king of kings and lord of lords. And so there is a shout of a king among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He brings them out from the world to be his own special people. And there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done. God has blessed these people. And neither Balaam, nor you, nor I can curse them. But the promise to Abraham was that those who bless you will be blessed and those who curse you will be cursed. So we can experience the blessing of God in our lives by blessing the people of God.